This video, as you saw from the title, is a serious video. This is not clickbait. This is 100% legitimate. I don't know how I'm going to title this. I have something in my head, some, like, you know, going to court or my deportation. This video is actually going to be separa separated into two parts. The first part is going to be about me going to court. Um, I'm being taken to court, United States District Court for the Middle District of Tennessee, subpoenaed to testify at deposition in civil action case. So letting you guys know what's happening. This is not clickbait. I thought it would be appropriate to hear it from me in case you see it on the news, in case you can see it in the paper, in case something happens to my channel, God forbid, something happens to my videos or whatever. This is something serious and absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, but I'm being taken to court. And the second half of the video is about my deportation. Now, my lawyer has come to a conclusion. Well, it wasn't up to her, but the government of Colombia, the immigration offices have given me a deportation date. I have my plane tickets already booked. And I'll be telling you guys the dates, where I'm going, how long I have to be gone for. I thought about making a separate video for the deportation, but I've already done that twice on this channel and I don't want to drag it out longer than it is. And I know I'm really extra and all dramatic and stuff. And yes, this is, I have a list here, by the way. This is dramatic. Stuff is always happening in my life always happening in my mind. and i was just on you now talking to people live live streaming broadcast and they're like nick your life should be a reality tv show your life is so dramatic and you don't even have to try it's true we made a list of everything that happened in 2017 my ex-boyfriend sent me nudes well that's not that dramatic half you guys get that too okay the police framed me remember back in what was it march the police framed me they put bullets in my suitcase i was bribed by the government i almost got stabbed in las vegas my eye got infected sent me to the hospital my sloth attacked me bit my finger i'm probably the only person on this whole planet to get attacked by a sloth I got sent to the hospital for my eye I got sent to the hospital for my sloth attacking me my deportation police coming to my house multiple times people outside of my apartment taking photos now that the case is over i can tell you guys all the details i've had to keep quiet for so long because you know when there's any kind of civil case whatever anything lawyer ish you don't do the details so i can't wait to tell you everything i've been thrown around this country like a headless chicken going here doing thumbprint face scans and interrogation and then being thrown over here and oh we gave you the wrong date so like it's just been a crazy roller coaster these past four months the person leaking my patreon video um the vegan death threats remember when i stopped being vegan at the beginning of the year all the death threats um i got married the ghosts where i'm sitting someone died right before i moved in here right here this was the master bedroom this was the headboard someone died right where i'm sitting and our house was haunted for months until we got rid of them man died in mukbang room i got attacked by the water weight and now i'm being taken to court to add on top of that on top of my deportation so you guys my life is just a roller coaster i can't even make this stuff up i can't make up being stabbed at las vegas like so anyways this is a life update for video for you guys and before i go into all of this i don't know how long this video is going to be if it's not for you just click out go to one of my regular mukbangs but i thought for my closest followers i could do some kind of update video for you so let's get into it the first thing going to court so i was streaming live on you now by the way I was also streaming live on you now when I got the deportation letter. I was also streaming live on you now when I got my, boom, there it is, my United States District Court for the Middle of Tennessee subpoena to testify at deposition in a civil action, subpoena to testify, and I was like, what the? Uh, so I was streaming live and I was like, guys, let me check my email. I've been on here for a couple hours. There was maybe 100, 200 people watching at that time. And I read my email. It comes from google legal Dash support at google.com. Hello, Google's received a subpoena for information related to your Google account in case entitled HAGIP LLC versus Tips Enterprises and Brian Tips. And I was like, what? And they had this attachment and Google internal reference number 1290335. You guys can look this up yourself. It's public knowledge. That's why I said it. I want you to hear it from me in case you see me or my videos on TV or in the papers. <laughs> So I was like, what is this about? Hag, H-A-G, Hag, and Brian, tips, who the, what, what did I do wrong? <laughs> I make videos eating, what the heck did I do wrong? So I clicked on the attachment they sent me, and it was this 
big long PDF and they're basically saying you are commanded to appear at the time, date, and place set forth below to testify. If you are an organization, you must designate one or more officers, directors, or managing agents or designate other persons who consent to testify on your behalf about the following matters or set forth in an attachment. By the way, I got this letter on the end of November. So I had like two weeks before I had to be in court. I was like, what? I live in Colombia. First of all, I'm not allowed to leave my house because I don't need the police harassing me. I can't even leave because I'm being deported because I'm basically on like down low. This whole time, you guys, I had trouble even leaving the house. I'm supposed to go testify for something in the middle of limbo of waiting to know when I'm supposed to be deported. I was going crazy. I was like, why is my life always crazy? So anyways, I was like, this cannot be real. A lot of you guys, I showed you, I read you the letter on you now and you guys are like, oh no, it's fake. They would have sent you an actual thing in the mail. They don't do things over email. So anyways, I sent, um, I forwarded it to my YouTube partner manager. All YouTubers that have over 150,000 subscribers are awarded a YouTube partner manager. So someone that I can contact if there's like a, a problem on my channel, which trust me, there's still tons of problems on my channel. For example, five of my videos are still demonetized for no reason, including one of my most viewed videos, this one, my Takis Fire Noodle, has had no monetization for like a month and they stopped, they halted all views. They're just stealing the views. So anyways, I'm in contact with this person a lot about lots of problems on my channel. And so I sent this to him. I'm like, hey, sorry to bother you again, but is this legit? Is this real? I don't know anything about lawyer stuff. And he responded, I can confirm. I just got off the phone with Google. This is real. I can tell by looking at it. I cannot give you any advice. You must contact a lawyer. I'm like, another lawyer? I just... So we're scrolling down through in the PDF, and I'm going to show you right now, and there's a copy of my video, Heart Attack Grew with Hungry Fat Chick. And this was take, this a screenshot must have been when it had 1.8 million views. Right now the video has 2 or 3 million views. I was like, why did they want that video? And then I realized H-A-G, that's Heart Attack Grill. So basically they said if you have any questions or concerns, contact Robert Kane, uh, Kane Spielman, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue in Fort Lauderdale. And they let the, the number. They said if the subpoena commands the production of documents of electronically stored information or tangible things before trial, a notice and copy of the subpoena must be served on each. You know what I mean? I read this stuff. I'm like, what did I just read? All this fancy lettering. I'm like, I just want to know why do I have to go to the United States? So I, I gave this person a call and the first time I called, it went to some lady, like a receptionist. She's like, he's not here. So I tried back on, and that was a Friday. So I tried back on Monday, another business day. And he answered the phone. I'm like, hi. He's like, yes, how can I help you? I'm like, um, I got this, this PDF from Google saying that I'm being subpoenaed to testify and appear in court for HAG, which I'm assuming it means heart attack grill because they have photos of my, my video there. And also, I'm not the only one. They picked out a few other people. Furious Pete and ABC News are also on the list. So they chose people that got like millions of views. I just happened to be one. Most of my videos don't get millions of views, but this one did. Um, he's like, oh yes, we're, we are representing heart attack grill. And they're like, basically what's happening, this is crazy, you guys. So we all hate a, a copycat, right? I, we all hate a copycat. They're annoying, they're obnoxious, they're juvenile. I just, I, they're desperate for attention. It's so annoying. You, got, you guys see it in preschool, all the way up to college. We see it here on YouTube all the time. It's obnoxious, right? So anyways, they said, Heart Attack Grill is being copycatted right now by a knockoff restaurant in Tennessee called The Heart Attack Shack. Now this restaurant has the same menu, the same design, logo, layout of the restaurant. They even do spankings. And I was like, okay. He's like, so your video is being, your your videos, but specifically the one you made at Heart Attack Grill is being used as evidence to show, they basically chose me because I have millions of views on that video. They said, your video proves that, you know, the population is aware of this restaurant, aware of its practices, aware of its style, its layout, the spankings if you don't finish your food. Um, to the point that they will associate that with Heart Attack Grill. Heart Attack Shack in Tennessee is copying them from head to toe, the same menu, everything. Um, with, without their permission, they're basically stealing their brand, right? And you might say, a lot of people are like, oh, Heart Attack Grill was so unhealthy, why would some, you know, this is the free world, this is the United States. If you have an idea, you are able, that it, if you patent it, 
if it's your business, this is L LLC, right? Um, that's yours. You know, I don't care if you agree with it or not. That's yours. They said my video, they will be shown to a jury to prove they use it to win a. They're using my video to hopefully win a case to prove that um, the restaurant in Tennessee that's copying them is in the wrong. And I'm like, oh, wow. And I was like, well, do I, ha do I have to go? He goes, no, you just have to sign something that we can use your videos and we'll represent you. Because since this is not their material, it's my material, I technically have to be, technically have to be there. However, this is all done on YouTube, which is like a free market place, whatever. So it's not like this is tangible anyway. That's the weird thing about the internet. You know, a lot of laws about the internet are strange, such as harassment or bullying or, or copyright, all that kind of stuff. It's very, ambiguous right so i had to sign a couple papers basically say you can represent me it's okay i don't have to be there i don't need a lawyer but if they win they're gonna win because of my video fam me and candy eating at the hardtack grill getting spanked is literally gonna save this restaurant um from being copied and you might be like oh that's so childish you can do what you want no there are people that fly all the way to Vegas on vacation just to go there. You know, it's a, it's a one of a kind special restaurant. That business in Tennessee will potentially take away so many customers that would have otherwise gone to Las Vegas. They'll say, oh, well, I'm in New York, Tennessee's closer, the plane ticket's cheaper, I'm just gonna go there, it's the same thing. Excuse me, that's wrong. So anyways, that's what's happening with that. So I wanna let you guys know, if that video goes down, um, if anything happens to my channel, if you see this in the news and they're literally showing my video, uh, yes, I signed off on it. I'm a, obviously, I don't think I have a choice. If I wanted to say you can't use it, I would have had to get a lawyer. Because technically, even though it's mine, Google owns it. You know when you post on Instagram, it's your photo? When, once you create an Instagram account, Instagram owns it, technically. So. That's, the, that's what I'm saying, the whole online thing that's very ambiguous about rights and copyright and what you own and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, so that's what's happening with, with that. Now we're at the second part of the video. I'm not even gonna bother reading this because it's in Spanish, but basically it paid off to get the lawyer. I was facing for life or for years. You know, there's so many people that are banned from Colombia for life or for years. One of Orland's friends banned for life because they overstayed their visa. And I know that sounds very strict, but it's up to the immigration officer's discretion. That goes for any country. I brought up this scenario in my second update. Uh, when I went to Guatemala, we went by bus, right? And there were people in front of us trying to get through the border and they, were be they had to pay a certain price, right? And they're being bribed on the side. Hey, come over here, I'll give you a special deal. No, come through the border here. Like these are officers trying to make extra cash. Like legally, you're supposed to do, well, what's legal in some countries, I don't even know. Say $50 is your entrance fee to enter Guatemala. Well, they're gonna charge $100 if you're white and gringo so they can pocket the other $50, you know? Uh, things are less regu regulated in Latin America, at least in my experience. Anyone that lives in Mexico, Venezuela, you guys know this is, it's different than the United States and Europe. It's a different way of the land, right? So anyways, we believe this may have been a form of discrimination, but we can't get them. I'm not going to sue the government. I'm not going to sue the immigration officer. I just want to be able to live here with my family. So I'm not looking to like fight back and this and that. I just want to be able to be here. I think, and so as my lawyer thought, this was a low key form of discrimination. The immigration officer saw I was gay. I was in a same sex relationship. And they decided to be extra, extra pissy with us. Um, can you prove it? No, but there's a lot of things that happen that you can't necessarily prove, but they happen. Um, Same-sex marriage is legal in Colombia, however, as of just a couple years ago, and also it may be a reflection of the law, but not necessarily a reflection of the people. And you see that in the United States as well. Just because Donald Trump is our president, president doesn't mean he represents all Americans views, right? And that goes for any president. Hillary Clinton would have certainly represented views that a lot of us didn't believe in either. So that's the nature of the beast. They were looking to get bribed, essentially. Um, it happened with the bullet in my suitcase. I was on a blacklist for six months. When I left for my honeymoon, I had to go through all of this screening, all this interrogation. I had to go into this machine, put my hands here. It went 
use scan me no one else had to go through that to get onto the airplane they opened up everything they asked me questions i would just be like i don't know as i don't know i had to go through that for six months because i didn't give them what they want which was money um like i said this type of stuff happens here now about the deportation i was facing possibly up to a year a couple years or even life it's up to their discretion if you go to the united states and you oversee your visa you get kicked out they have no obligation to let you back in a lot of people aren't able to come back in so I was in a sticky situation because I am married and I should be able to be here. However, I arrived on a tourist visa. If you guys want to know the whole story, you're going to have to watch the other video. There it is, or just click the link down below. Don't watch the first one of me when I'm hysterical and not making any sense. Uh, that was the night when I got the letter. Watch the other one when I'm more collective and trying to explain everything to you guys from start to finish. So anyways, I already have my plane tickets. This is what's happening. 60 days, my feet have to be in U.S. soil. 60 days i can't be running around to other countries i have to be in my homeland in order to come back as a tourist so i will be leaving february 17th which is basically one month from today um i'll be leaving in a month and i'll be going from here to my parents house in central pennsylvania like harrisburg and i'll be there for two months I am 90% sure I'm making a special trip to either Las Vegas or Los Angeles or both um, for like a week or two. I decided if this is what's happening, I'm going to make the most of it. If I want to make sure I'm sane mentally and not crying every day, missing my husband and Mr. Noodle and Miss Kitty, which I snuggle with every day, I need to keep myself busy. And how do I stay busy? I'm going to start filming back to back every day like I used to. Um, I don't live in the United States. I know there's a lot of people that I love on YouTube. It's a great way to meet other people, share subscribers, share viewers. I get views, they get views. It's fun for you guys if you're subscribed to both of us. I've done collabs with Jesse Smiles, Carly Steele, Wendy's Eating Show, Hungry Fat Chick, oh my god. So, um, yeah, and they were all amazing, and I would love to do more of that. Las Vegas or Los Angeles, uh, just because I want to be someplace central with lots of other things that I can film, you know? I need to make my channel fun. But also people, a lot of people live in Las Vegas, a lot of people live in Los Angeles. They're very central, excuse me, central locations. So if you guys want to collab, hit me up. I've already reached out to a few people. Well, it's still ready to hear back. Some of you guys were already putting it together. I have three people on the list, huge, huge YouTubers. So if you want to collab with me, big or small, let me know, uh, mention it in your video, tell people to comment so I see it or whatever. So, and when I come back, the plan is I'm going to come back on April, looking at my calendar here, April 15th is when I come back to Colombia as a tourist. Now, by that time, it'll be a new calendar, calendar year, right? I'm supposed to be out of the country 100 I can only be in Colombia 180 days in every calendar year. We're now in 2018, which means I get a fresh, clean slate, no matter what happened. Now, if I didn't have the lawyer, I would have just been kicked out for who knows how long, um, but that's been settled. So I'll be here on a tourist visa. The next step is to apply for a marriage visa all over again. The first time they denied it because of me overstaying it in the first place, but cross your finger, it works out. Orlin and I, this is where we live. We wanna live here for the next year or two. Um, we have we both personally have a lot of things we're paying off um, This is best for our family. Mr. Noodles from here. Orleans fish and reptiles are from here. We have furniture here um, And also when I first started YouTube, I was literally making a hundred dollars a month I was living off savings. We were we have moved four times in this country the first time we lived here We lived in a place called the Hobbit hole. It was like How do I explain this? We have a house here and a house here an apartment building the space in between the floors we walked around hunched because the ceiling was so low. It was like it was like where the slaves or the maids lived or where you stored crops like potatoes. We lived in that when we first came here. So we originally came to Columbia just because we we had a lot on our plate. And now we have a car. We're paying off the car. We're in a two-year lease in our apartment. So we have no plans or desires to leave right now. In the future, we do want to be in the United States. But that's a separate a separate chapter for our lives, especially me personally. Yes, I need that marriage visa. I don't want to keep leaving every two months, every three months. And that would bring up the whole problem again. That means all of 2018, I'm only allowed to be here for 180 days, which is only half the year. That means for six months in 2018, I will have to be in the United States, which I don't want to 
be separate from my family or all, all that over again. So cross your fingers, that's the next step. First I have to leave b before I can even do that, but we're gonna apply for the marriage visa so I can be here. <sighs> so that's, that's everything, that's the life update. My crazy dramatic life, always something. Getting, almost getting stabbed, going to the hospital, attacked by sloth, getting deported. I mean, this sounds too, this sounds like a movie, but it's my life. And I just wanna thank you guys for sticking, for sticking with me through all of this, St uh, thick and thin, you know? And thank you.